Hi there, I'm Zoot Java. Today I'd like to talk about the coronavirus. My father just died yesterday from the virus in a nursing home. I'd like to bring this up because of all the information slash misinformation that has been going around lately. The point I'm making today is to emphasize what I've been arguing with people about for ages. I saw that Justin Trudeau said that after reading a report on the military's findings of five long-term care homes in the Toronto area, where they had been helping out for the past month, made him both sad and angry. The report made allegations of many types of dangerous and unhygienic behavior since they've been providing assistance since April 28th. The allegations include aggressive behavior and inappropriate transfers. Another facility allegedly had forceful eating and fecal contamination. Yet another had medication reported as given, but not actually given. Soiled diapers on patients, not in proper sitting position when eating. Staff reusing gloves or not washing hands between resident interactions. The presence of insects such as cockroaches and ants. Premier Doug, Fair, Doug Ford of uh, Ontario was quoted as saying that it was so disturbing, it was the worst, most heart-wrenching report I have ever read in my entire life. Staff at one facility also displayed a general culture of fear to use supplies because they cost money. Ford said he would consider a full public inquiry because everything's on the table. I'm not ruling out anything after reading this. Ford has said that the long-term care system was broken during this coronavirus crisis, yet has not yet come up with a plan on how to address the problems. He said that Ontario will need help from the federal government in order to make substantive changes to the system. The Ontario Nurses Association President Vicki McKenna said that they've been elevating their concerns about a growing number of long-term care homes for quite some time now. My take on this? As I mentioned earlier, this has been something I've had heated discussions with people before on many levels. When you have areas such as this, with the long-term care homes, or teachers, or just about anything, it comes down to money because everything does. If you don't pay people enough to work at the jobs, then you wind up taking what you get. You can't be picky when there's nobody to pick from. I've heard of people complaining about teachers in certain areas, but if you don't pay enough to entice the best, you simply cannot attract the best. You wind up with whoever shows up for the job being hired. It's the same with the homes. They can only employ whoever shows up for the job. I spoke to my son about this before because he coaches his son's hockey team. But in order to coach the team, he has to pay the police department to do a background check on him or else he isn't allowed to coach the kid's hockey team. Even though he does this for free in his spare time, the league won't pay for him to have the police check, which they insist on. Yet he gets no money for this. No deal on my grandson's league fees. Nothing. Not a thing to make somebody want to do this. So if he says, I've had enough, next year I'll just pay my money like everyone else and you can find somebody else to coach for free and have to pay on top of it to have the police check done. Well, now they got this problem. If they can't find somebody to do all this, what are they going to do? Well, they'll have to offer something to someone or else to pay them. It's the same as the staff in the homes. They'll have to pay more to attract people who will carry out the new directives, which are sure to come out of this. As for staff having a culture of not using protective equipment because it costs money, well, that's obviously something that the supervisors are leaning on the employees to follow because they're being told this themselves. But all this will cost a fortune, which could itself bring an end to the for-profit homes. 
it will at least increase the cost on people but pay for it more than likely astronomically. You can't simply say these are the new rules to follow or else without some reasonable, and I stress reasonable, method of improving the ways that this can be achieved. I worked at a factory who would come up with new rules because things cost too much, but the rules always broke down because they just weren't feasible. The Prime Minister should realize that we simply can't afford to keep paying for the rest of the world when we have problems like this involving the taxpayers who built this country living in neglect. He constantly harps on Canadians are this and Canadians are that, but Canadians should have the right to live out the end of their lives in dignity. He has got to stop letting people into this country because they claim refugee status simply because we can't afford to help out the rest of the world and pay for their problems any longer. We have problems of our own and they are becoming increasingly more and more expensive. What the Prime Minister doesn't realize is that most of the Canadians that he includes himself among are nothing like him. He's never lived the lives that most Canadians have. Something that he neglects to say is that Canadians are not all rich. He grew up living the life of a millionaire. Born into money and privilege, he knows nothing of the struggle that Canadians have to live on a daily basis. This is why he finds it easy to simply give tens of millions of dollars of hardworking Canadians money to people in other countries so that he can feel good about himself and to prove to the useless United Nations why they should have him as their head. Because that really is what he's after. Especially now, when the government has put so many of their own people, and why I by own people, I mean Canadian citizens. When the government has put so many of them out of work because of their mismanagement of this pandemic, Canadians can't work to pay the taxes for this self-indulgent millionaire privileged so-called leader of the country to give away to the rest of the world. Just like $27 million given away to South America for their refugees just the other day. This is a luxury for a rich country with no national debt to feel benevolent enough to give away. The report of on the five long-term care facilities are proof that we can no longer afford to do this. The rest of the world is going to have to begin learning to deal with their own problems as well as their people. We can't pay for them or take in their people any longer, at least until these issues are dealt with regarding our own people first and foremost, and then to eliminate our national debt. Only then can we even entertain the thought of helping out other people and other countries. If people think that we should be paying for other people and other countries, then they are free to donate to them after they pay their taxes. Now for the part you've all been waiting for, my bad joke. I looked at the obituaries the other day and found out something very strange. People die in alphabetical order. <clears throat> Anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps me out. Hit the bell for notifications of all of my words of wisdom. Share my content on all your social media because I get censored by all the usual suspects. Until later, have a Java on Zoot.